All right, guys. So um, I'm from CA. I'm not too sure um, how many of you might know CA, but we, we are uh, one of the biggest uh, software company globally. And uh, about last year, we started uh, this journey into uh, enabling uh, companies in the field to use uh, mobile analytics. So today, my uh, DevOps uh, is wholly focused on mobile applications. And uh, my name is Nick. I'm basically a DJ for uh, CA. Not the music kind of DJ, but more like a desk jockey. That's how I'm known in my company. And uh, they also call me an app man. So uh, essentially, this uh, specific solution that I'm going to share you, uh, that I'm going to share uh, a whole lot of details about is free to use in the pre-prod uh, pre environment. So be it development or uh, testing, as long as you don't break certain uh, user limits for a business app and for a consumer app, you can use it uh, free without any time limitations. So I wanted to call that out so you don't feel like I'm doing some sort of blatant uh, sales pitch out here. I'm actually a technical person. I don't even know uh, the licensing metric except for uh, the fact that this solution is uh, measured in terms of the monthly active users, right? So the solution is called uh, Mobile App Analytics, and uh, the, the idea here is simple. You basically want a nimble and agile mobile DevOps tools that brings your operations and your developers together in one team, and essentially what they want to do is uh, quickly build apps, uh, manage them on an ongoing basis through various environments, and keep that uh, capability as a seamless capability, right? So the, the, the punchline here is create a five-star mobile experience for your end users. That's, that's the end goal. So uh, I've got a brief agenda out here and firstly, what I want to do is, I've got a few interesting analogies uh, to define what mobile analytics is about. Secondly, I've got a few hurdles. I, I see there are a lot of developers in the room, and they would be quite familiar with those hurdles. Um, then I want to jump into the old way of managing mobile apps. And right after that, I want to introduce a new sexier way using CA uh, mobile app analytics. Lastly, uh, I'm going to do a quick demo because it's never uh, good enough until you have seen how the product works in actions. Uh, and lastly, uh, my goal from this session is that I want uh, the folks who are especially new to the DevOps journey from a mobile point of view, take them from a zero to a hero uh, sort of uh, 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 capability understanding. So if, 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 you, if that's clear enough, I want to firstly start off with a little video that is more like an analogy as to what uh, our mobile app experience is like for the end users.
essentially the, the I, I think it's pretty clear the idea behind this video is what is mobile app experience for the end users like so this is a sneak peek into that and I've got another uh, analogy here so basically uh, in my opinion uh, using a mobile app is uh, can be compared with someone who drives a car and what sort of experience they get out of that so uh, typically uh, a driver's experience is all around uh, the look and feel of the car but it's not just limited to that it's 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 about uh, uh, how the car performs uh, in difficult scenarios when there are bumps and dents on the road and it's more than that what is the dashboard like and uh, what sort of luxury features are in the car so Basically, I look at the experience of uh, driving, the, driving the car and using an application as one and the same. So with that analogy, I want to introduce some of uh, the key indicators of what is mobile app experience like in the mobile market. So there are, on an average, 26 applications on uh, a typical mobile application, mobile uh, phone user. And uh, the second statistic here is if your application does not perform, or if it's difficult to use or difficult to maneuver around, 25% uh, of the end users will just delete them and move on. And lastly, there is an unspoken rule of three seconds. I think some of you might be familiar with this. Uh, you must be doing some Googling around and trying to learn uh, what's happening in the DevOps, uh, mobile DevOps space. So there's an unspoken rule in place that if any of your controllers or activities or your page, simply speaking, the GUIs, they take more than three seconds to serve, uh, that's a dead end, that's a red flag. So with that being said, um, what we essentially understand is brand experience is everything. And when you, when you say brand experience, people think it's all about UI, how beautiful the screens are, how uh, good looking the screens are, but at CA, through research, uh, mostly ethnographical research, which is uh, sitting down with uh, mobile app users and with mobile DevOps team, we learned that uh, mobile app experience is not just about GUI, it's more than that. It's about app performance, it's about the sort of uh, responses your application serves, and it's, it's about insights into crashes, and uh, uh, usage of your application and building that complete understanding of your mobile ecosystem and, and serving uh, a five-star user experience for your end users. So that's in our understanding based on uh, sitting with our customers and based on uh, watching uh, mobile users, we learned that that's the, the complete definition to mobile end user experience. So, the next thing I want to cover is uh, there are already a lot of dilemmas. So the next few slides are around what sort of problems and hurdles uh, application teams have in place. So firstly, there's already a dilemma. Do I go with a, a web application, mobile application, or a native application? And then there are things like uh, every time you talk to a mobile application team, they tend to believe that they have 99 problems, but the web application team doesn't have any. So there is a lot of pressure in terms of bringing out uh, a quick value from the mobile app, but there is launching and then there is branding, there is getting uh, the right sort of traction from the customers. So there are a lot of other uh, big things to deal with in a mobile application scenario. Uh, so that leads to one question. What is the secret recipe uh, to be successful with a mobile application? So I have the top list of uh, things that you need to be able to tap into in order to be successful with your mobile application. And that is to have a continuous DevOps process in place. Secondly, you need to have influential people vouching in for your application during the soft launch or the beta trial of your apps. And uh, then there is, uh, you need to somehow figure out a way to get your customers buzzing about your application. And lastly, one of the most common principles uh, that prevails in the industry, which is to have a very simple, uh, uh, keep it simple and sweet principle in place, right? So, 
on top of that, we have a whole lot of different possibilities as to how you can uh, end up with a bad user experience. And I have to admit that developers are really cool and creative with the sort of codes they come up with. So there is a, I don't know how many of you know, but there is a, a, a funky way of calling uh, bad exceptions in a mobile application uh, error sort of scenario. And there are things like, I ate bad food, which means you're trying to push more load than the application can process. Then there is things like deadfall, which is essentially a contention deadlock sort of problem. So there are a lot of funky uh, codes in place, which, which is how when uh, the mobile application developers look at a problem, they, can, uh, they have a light bulb moment. And they're like, aha, I know what this is. But sooner or later, because of the complexity and uh, the, the level of information in place, they will run out of ideas and, 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 and codes to recollect that problem. So I also listed some of the other problems on the, on the board, and you are better at understanding those than me, but I thought I'll call them out. Uh, but then when you uh, look at an application developer, uh, the, there's a lot of flaming in place. People are very uh, open with uh, their experience and their feelings these days. So it's, it's not uncommon to see a mobile app user to go on the app stores and, and flaming about your mobile apps. So just today I was uh, looking at one of our customers in US, Wells Fargo, and there is a five page article on one of the websites, and this is a user of the application, and this is how much knowledge he has. He made a five page article on why Wells Fargo's latest application update sucks, right? And when you, when you go and talk to the team, they are, uh, something like this guy. They're like, but I'm a good person. Why are they getting personal and uh, saying so many bad things about me? So some of the users these days fall into this category, which is they do a lot of calculation just to uh, spit out that your application is bad. It's a waste of the time and money. And the old way of tackling this problem was to look at uh, logs, to look at stack traces, and this sort of way of doing it was perfect for an ISO, in my definition. So how do we shift from this scenario to something that is uh, easy and nimble, as I first articulated? So let me unfold the MAA way of doing things, and uh, if you, if you uh, remember MAA, it's easy to confuse it with MMA, most of my colleagues will always say, hey, how's uh, MMA updates doing? So I just want to call it out, it's MAA, Mobile App Analytics. And the idea in simple terms is to start using it in the development phase, then run through production, pre-prod, and, and testing, and then deploy it in production. So essentially through all those uh, single phases and stages, you want to drive better value for your end users. Give them more value. That's the that's the goal. Um, and what sort of features does this translate into? So these are some of the differentiators of using mobile app analytics. It's a single SDK for driving low-level analytics, which is developers' crash analytics and developers-related uh, capabilities. Second is it helps you to manage performance analytics. It gives you real-time input into how the app is doing in terms of performance, response times, data sent, data received, network URL performance, network latency, all of that good stuff, and you can raise alarms on that. And thirdly, from a business owner perspective, you can get inside the brain of your end users. You can build a bridge of connection with your end users by gracefully handling exception scenarios. So if your application crashes on the end user device, you can then trigger a feedback bridge. And this feedback would basically ask you, uh, what was your experience like? Do you want to leave an input? Rather than relying on iTunes Connect or uh, other uh, crash logs or expecting your end users 
to call in through your support centers and letting you know that it's a, it's, it's a bad experience. So there's a lot of features in place. I don't want to call out every single one of them. But during our 101, if you are interested in something specifically, I can uh, help you drive more information there. So typical use cases is application usage for business owners. Secondly is understand your user engagement, um, the transaction flows, how many tiers or how many steps starting from login screen into uh, your uh, card screen and finally payment and operations, dev and performance, all of that. So that basically means on a high level you get low level developer analytics, you get operation analytics in terms of performance, and you get business analytics in terms of usage. So all three corners <laughs> of uh, DevOps using a single SDK. Now with other tools, what's happening is they have one SDK for user analytics, usage analytics, they have one SDK for performance, and another for crash analytics. So we combine everything into one to keep it a light SDK and quickly give you all that information. So uh, this is a screenshot of what happens when a crash uh, is experienced on your mobile application. So this pops up and a uh, user can then uh, make an input. So how do you do all this? Uh, it's a lot of things, a lot of power, but how do you get started? So simply as a developer, you can go on trials website of CA, sign up, once you sign up, they will send you over the credentials. And from that point on, uh, until you use this SDK in the pre-prod environments, uh, you, you don't owe anything. So uh, why are we even doing this? Obviously, if you make uh, money off your end users, we also want a piece of that. That's, that's a given, right? When you use it in, in production environment. But basically, CA first started uh, this momentum on DevOps and uh, defining today's economy as an application economy whereby a user, even if they want to uh, enjoy wine, they get on Vivino app and they check the ratings of the wine simply by scanning the name of the wine and getting other users' feedback. So if you're not an expert in, in terms of wine or any other industry, all those interesting use, use cases are in place. So we want to give back to the DevOps community by giving them a free to use tool in order to learn better and manage better. That's the whole idea why CA came up with this solution. And for enterprise customers, we obviously want to make revenue. So I've got a simple use case here before I show you uh, the demo. So here there is a ticket exchange, ticket exchange app uh, through which you can book concerts and events tickets. And here the user is basically interested in some concerts. So this user is, an, is, is a, a fan of John Elton. So they click on John Elton and they experience what we call as a spinning dial, which is long processing time. So once they click on John Elton's show, they want to book uh, tickets for two persons. And right after uh, they make an input on the quantity. They are asked to uh, log in. So that's coming up next. And right after login, what happens is there is a crash. So the moment a crash happens in real world scenario, your team is left uh, unnoticed. They don't know about it until until they contact the, your uh, iTunes Connect blogs or they try to download or hear from the end user and, and get all this info. So after this use case, what I want to do is now show you if this happened with your uh, mobile application, what you can do. So before I go into the demo, which is like a quick 10 minutes demo, do you have any questions? So far, uh, on the basis of what you saw. Okay, so I'll go into demo.
I'm streaming off my phone, so it would be a little bit slow. So this is uh, the home page of mobile app analytics. And here, right off the bat, what you see is, in terms of performance and monthly active users, your top, top applications, if you're managing more than one app. And you can scroll here and look at the app ranking in terms of the most notorious app that you have deployed for your end users. Then. Um, the, the top app in terms of data sent and data received, and the top app in terms of usage across different geographies for your end users. You can also see uh, problematic apps to the right of the screen, and here you can see apps in terms of uh, average latency. Uh, your top app in terms of the slowest response right after clicking the icon on, on the end user device, and so forth, so on, you have a geo map, geo heat map, uh, with the total number of sessions in a certain period for a specific version of the app on a specific platform carrier. You have all those details in place. And you also get a summary of uh, the app performance with different analytics and metrics on the home page. So for this uh, demo, what I want to do is I firstly want to select a larger time window. So I want to see a performance of this specific app in the last 90 days. So I select 90 days as an option here. And then I want to filter for this fixed change app. And my use case, if you realized, was on this fixed change app. So I want to focus on this app. And I want to see the performance for all my different versions. So here I can see straight away that in the last three months, I had five or seven sessions. And in total, I had 14 unique users for those sessions. I had a total of roughly 1,000 HTTP requests accumulated uh, for all those users. And this is the user retention. That's a fat finger syndrome. I didn't intend to click that. So I'm basically looking at the user retention. That means in the first week, how many of uh, my total users came back to use the app? So that defines how sticky your app is. And I can even see a geo map in terms of hotspots, performance problems across the globe. I can see uh, in terms of uh, bad exceptions and crashes, and in terms of usage, all of those factors. So the moment I select one of those criteria, it will then uh, draw these hotspots on different uh, countries' maps. So if you're interested in Australia and New Zealand, you can see what sort of hotspots you have for these countries. And out of those total number of sessions, which is 507, you had 211 crashes. And then you had, uh, on an average, 0.1 bad HTTP request out of every one request. That's 10% bad request. So the screen is pretty intuitive. You can quickly zoom from here into crash analytics and go and see what sort of crash uh, information is available. And here you can see that uh, in the last three months, the number of crashes have increased. So in Feb and March, there was an exponential growth into the number of crashes that have been happening on your app. And uh, you can also see how, where are these crashes happening? Is it on iOS, on Android? Uh, if it's happening on Wi-Fi or 2G network? So if network plays a part, you can also quickly see if network is a result, uh, is the reason why uh, crashes are happening. 
But uh, the, more interestingly, we also categorize all these crashes into different reasons why the crashes are happening. So we categorize them by uh, deadlocks, contention, missing uh, GUIs, or probably uh, things like you have too much load on the app, all of those reasons. So here, I'm looking for one specific category of crash, which is I forgot to uh, define my UI in uh, the, the manifest file. So you can see all the sessions for those reasons. And the moment you click there, it will take you into that specific user session, and it will show you device resources related information, CPU, um, uh, the memory uh, this application took on the end user device. It will show you uh, a symbolicated crash log as to the exact reason why that happened. So here I honestly know the reason is the activity was not found or defined in the manifest file. And if the end user left uh, feedback, you can see that feedback here. So I will quickly show you another example whereby you can see the feedback left by the end user. So you can go to app performance similarly and see some performance related information. And here, one of the interesting uh, analytics I'd like to use is how much time did it take from that instance where the end user clicked on the icon and uh, the, 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 the first activity was rendered. So that's 884 8, milliseconds here, which is not alarming at all. But uh, in the next versions, we are coming up with the reasons and where exactly those uh, seconds were spent. So that will give you more information on uh, what's exactly happening behind the scenes. And same way, you can see a whole lot of network performance related information. So things like the most uh, uh, notorious URLs, which uh, basically exhibit bad user experience. So if Imagine you have a revenue generating app, and on your uh, product selection page and payment page, if there is a lot of processing time or speedy dial, then that will basically drive your users away from your app. So you can make all those derivations here. Same way, if I now want to uh, zoom into usage of my app, I can select the app usage option on the left, and this will give me how much traction I have with new, new users against my current users. Is my growth healthy? And what sort of usage I have by platform? Do I have a balance between iOS and Android? That kind of information. And then you can see where a majority of your users are on the globe uh, with the carrier uh, related info. So if you have more users than opt-ins, you can then think of uh, running a marketing campaign with Office, uh, whereby they can send some SMSs from the application to your users to uh, use a new feature or something like that. Uh, same way, you can zoom into app sessions, and sessions basically give you a video playback of an individual user session. So every single step the user took uh, in, in their customer journey you, you have a capture of that in a video format. And uh, so say for example, I, I click on this specific session. Here you can see every single tap events the end users took and how do they place in terms of uh, resources used on your mobile app. And you can even click on individual screens and as they occur, on the session in form of a video. So the moment you click on a video, this basically plays the end user, this specific transaction, and shows all the tap events, where the taps happened. So it's blank right now because it's still uh, uh, rendering the first screen. And as it renders, then it goes into different uh, uh, GUIs and activities. So here you can even see where they tapped. This is recreating that customer journey and exactly seeing where a specific problem happened. So here, assuming that you looked at this video 
and the application crashed at a certain screen, you can close this and click on the user feedback if the user left any feedback and, and directly learn from the end user what happened. So there are a lot of uh, features here and I don't want to run into every single one of them but before I uh, uh, pass the ball to the next presenter, uh, I want to quickly just uh, run through the app screen feature here, which is pretty cool. So what we are doing is we are stitching every single transaction possible in form of a template map and show you where the heat, heat is or the problems are. And then I can tell you that this screen normally has very good performance and end user experience but these screens uh, normally take more time to process. When you click on one specific, specific screen, it will then open more details and tell you what, sh what sort of drop rates or what sort of abandonment that specific screen has, where the users are tapping on that screen. So if a background image looks like a button and they are tapping there, you know this is a usability problem and you need to fix that in order to uh, get the right sort of usage from this app. So that's uh, in place as well. And then there is a flow map, which shows you crashes, drops, and abandonment by individual screens. So you know uh, the worst performing screens in your application. I want to close it off uh, uh, by, by uh, letting you know that there is also a custom API if you want to uh, uh, basically post here how many searches are happening on a weekly basis or what sort of performance your uh, more important users are having. You can also do all of that. So with that being said, I, I don't think I have the time to run into every single uh, uh, feature here, but if you want to uh, learn more, you can talk to me after the session. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure, man. Um, so that's quite a, uh, quite a map of features you do have there. What's the load that um, your SDK puts on the application? Yeah, good question. So um, we only relay all these analytics the moment an app session terminates. So we are very mindful of what sort of load we put on top of your application processing. So the moment it goes into background and thousand events, tap events, all sort of events have accumulated, only then we relay it to our uh, analytics server. The second thing we are doing is we are also doing compression before we relay. And uh, we also have the option to only relay over Wi-Fi. So you don't eat up uh, your end user, uh, you know, whatever bandwidth or network package they have. So there are a lot of options there. And if my apps crash, uh, what's to say your thing when it actually send it? If your app crashed. Yeah, so if my app has actually crashed, mm -hmm. um, what's going to trigger? this um, SDK from trigger it running, what's going to keep it running in the background? Good, good point. So we have a local DB in place, and right bef before that crash happened, we have, a, we have all the events collected there. The moment a crash happens, our feedback API kicks in. It prompts the user to enter uh, some feedback and closes that session. So that handling, ensures that you have all the information available, including screenshots of the user transaction, if needed, in place before we relate to the analytics server. So all of that happens in the background. Can you turn off the capture of the video? Yes. That's an option on the settings panel, which I didn't show. And you can even set up threshold breaches, alarms, and alerts for your dev team, if needed. So the running model, just from what you said, was there's a there's a there's, there's your application which is being monitored, and then there's a, a dev process or a, there's a, 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 another application sitting next to it, which is where the events are being stored, and that's the thing which is watching your app and detecting when your app is. Stored. That's right. That's right. Okay. And, and okay. Now, from a permissions point of view, from the user, do they need to do anything funky to get no. both those apps? You just uh, make this a part of the EULA agreement. So when they agree, I mean, when they get that notification, they can accept it as a part of the EULA. Okay. Yeah, so you don't need to do any separate. But if you looked at running applications on the device, you'd see two. Correct. See the main one and the side so Yeah. Okay.
you can, uh, so by default, you're entering their class address, email address, and you can use any that message. That's a that's a good question. So what we do is, upon load of each screen, we take that screenshot. So we don't uh, uh, by by uh, accident share confidential information. So upon load. So let's say I click on a button and go to the next screen. That's when the screenshot happens. So in, in, in that uh, instance where the user is inserting info, we're not taking any screenshots. Like that assumes that the next screen is fine. Yes. What if that screen is fine? So you can uh, enable a simulation-based uh, video screen capture, whereby all the data on the screen will get replaced with some junk data. Obfuscating data. Okay, so that feature is there as well. And what's the security point of view? You can access uh, the carrier, you can access the uh, user and mobile device, and you can actually access everything in this database. And what's the security layer which is being uh, letting the user who is using it from giving all the data to you? Sure. So uh, we are able to watch everything that the mobile application is able to watch. We don't go down to the OS level because we want to be mindful of uh, security and privacy related info. Um, this uh, carrier, uh, you, you can see the carrier name, but you can't see uh, data package related info or their phone number. All that you can't do. So it's exactly uh, the same as what the app can see. And what we do is if customers are uh, uh, slightly more sensitive to PIIs, we have the option to disable all those PIIs in the background. So that's a setting in your individual app profile. Yep, so um, when we do a uh, simulation based uh, app, we've got one here, I've got our own license and stuff like that. Do we have to add some of your license agreement into our license agreement with the app? Um, it's entirely up to you. We don't have a standard uh, uh, text as to this is how you should be doing it. So it's up to your uh, team how they want to insert uh, that analytics uh, disclaimer that we will be collecting some analytics. Do you want to participate in that sort of uh, thing? So it's, it's up to your team. Sure. Moving around, what options do you have in the data store? Do you have any perspective about where they store? Um, so for the freemium model, for uh, pre fraud environments, it gets stored, stored into CS servers. And uh, it's hosted in the US. In your, in, if you want to deploy it on premise, then it gets stored into your uh, analytics server. So the concept is simple. There is a library, and then there is an analytics server. So these two mechanisms are needed to be in place in order to get all this value out. I'm pretty sure Andrew is keen to pass it over to the next uh, presenter. Well, there's one more question. Well done. Cool. Well, please join me in thanking Nick.